you're spending time absorbing wrong answers. And it's going to be very difficult to unlearn those when you're trying to restudy for the exam because you failed it the first time. Hey, sterile processing professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. I want to share with you the secrets to quickly and easily get your sterile processing certification. This video is not intended to sell my products, but unfortunately, I did design them extremely well. And with so many five-star reviews, I'd say they work pretty well too. Now watch this video all the way through. This is a fail-safe strategy that will get you certified. Let's get into it. The first thing I want you to know is that you need the HSPA 9th edition manual. And it doesn't matter if you intend to take the CRCST from HSPA or the CSPDT from CBSPD. The HSPA manual covers everything you need to know for both. Believe me, I've looked through all the CBSPD guides and their practice questions. Everything can be found in the HSPA Sterile Processing 9th Edition Technical Manual. This is the foundation for your study. Now, reading is great, but not everyone can retain all the information they need to pass an exam simply by reading. You need scientifically proven resources that enhance your studying and memory capture. By using practice exams, you can increase your chances of passing the certification exam by 50%. It's known as the testing effect, and it has a lot of research behind it. But did you know that flashcards also have a lot of research proving increased scores as well? Flashcards use the approach of active recall and spaced repetition. Now, if reading is okay for prepping for an exam and practice exams are really good for an exam, then adding flashcards pretty much guarantees your ability to pass. But there's a catch here. There's always a catch. There can be a very dangerous side to this as well. Because these approaches drastically increase your ability to solidify memory, you should not be using these low quality free practice tests from websites whose primary purpose is to drive traffic so they can get Google ad income. You're spending time absorbing wrong answers and it's going to be very difficult to unlearn those when you're trying to restudy for the exam because you failed it the first time. I want you to be set up for success and I do that by creating the highest quality, accurate, products. Now that you have learned all the necessary materials you need to pass, the question is, how do you use them appropriately? There's not really a wrong way to use these, but there are much more effective ways for sure. Depending on your level of knowledge and experience, I always recommend at least six weeks of studying prior to your exam. Can you do it with less? Of course, it will just take more of your time and commitment. Now I wanna get through this five-step strategy briefly so I don't waste your time. Number one, you need to read through the entire ninth edition manual. Reading isn't the most effective strategy, but it's still a very important one. Take time to read chapter by chapter, spreading it out over time with just a little bit of reading every day, little by little, because it's higher quality reading. Number two, over the time span of reading the manual, you should be cycling through the flashcards as often as possible or as often as feels comfortable for you. There's probably going to be some cards in the deck you already solidly know right off the bat. If that's the case, you can simply remove those cards on your first run through so you don't keep wasting your time or you can keep them in there. It's totally up to you. Cycle the flashcards all the way up until test day. Remember, this is active recall and spaced repetition. Number three, I would advise that you take the practice exams at least weekly. Since my practice exams have six in total, you could either do two per week, so you end up taking all the exams twice over the six weeks, or you could take all of them each week. Personally, I would retake them all each week because I want to take the full advantage of the testing effect as much as possible. Number four, hydration. In the last couple days before your exam, and especially the morning of your exam, make sure you're nice and hydrated. Why? Because the brain is made up of 80% water. 
and dehydration greatly impacts brain function. So don't limit yourself because you couldn't drink enough water. Start each day with a full glass first thing in the morning and continue drinking water regularly all day. So simple, but so critical. And lastly, number five, this one is critical for test day. When you're in the process of taking the test, you don't have to answer every question right away. You can flag questions and come back to them at the end. So why would you flag and skip a question? Look, the test is 150 questions. There's only so much information you can pull from to create these questions. So information is going to overlap. You will most likely find answers inside of another question that answers one of your flagged questions. Simple stuff. Like I've seen questions that will ask something like, what does MRSA stand for? MRSA. And maybe you're not sure, so you flag it. But then later in the exam, there might be a question like, methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus is found primarily on the skin true or false there's your answer and maybe that was the one extra answer you needed to pass don't skim over this test day strategy following those five steps will lock you in to passing your certification on your first attempt as always any topics or videos you want to see put those in the comments down below. If you liked the video, consider subscribing, give the video a like. I love you guys. Happy New Year. 2025 is going to be your year for certification and I'll catch you in the next one.